All right, welcome back, guys. Welcome back. This is video number seven in my Akai MPC Studio tutorials for a beginner. And I'm your host, Steve Trax. And today we are going to learn how to sample the audio from our computer. Now, even though the MPC Studio does not have a built-in audio interface, it can be done. This means you will be able to sample from any sound source you hear out of your speakers. This means the internet, YouTube, your audio player, everything. Now, unfortunately for you Mac guys, I'll be demonstrating this on a Windows 10 computer, but no worries if you're using a Mac, I know there are some tutorials floating around on YouTube that you may wanna check out that demonstrate a similar process using Soundflower. Now, before I get started, if you're new to this series, go back and watch the previous video so you can follow along here and you'll know exactly where we're at. All right, so to get started, we're going to switch the camera view to our computer because I want you guys to be able to follow along and see exactly what I'm doing so that you can duplicate this process to get your stuff set up. All right, guys, so to get started, you're gonna need to install um, a free program called Voice Meter. Now I'm gonna leave the link in the description below. And basically it is a, an application that allows you to run your outputs into your inputs. Because if you don't have an interface, it's pretty hard to do or virtually impossible without this software or something similar on your computer. So you're gonna download and install this and um, it's actually donateware so you know if you find yourself using it all the time go on and send them a few bucks you know these guys you know they work hard to develop this stuff and if you find yourself using it a lot hook them up so you're going to install voice meter and the second program that i recommend is asio for all now if you use fl studio it's already installed on your computer and um, I use it, you know, on all my computers. It's basically a low latency sound driver that allows you to kind of control and assign the inputs and outputs on your computer. And it puts it all in one place. So it really makes everything um, really easy to, to navigate. So definitely this is recommended. And if you wanna follow along this video with a similar setup to mine, I, you know, recommend you guys uh, installing this as well. So once these are installed, come on back and queue up the video. All right, welcome back. So now once everything is installed and set up, you're gonna run voice meter. So to do that, you're gonna click either the Windows key on your keyboard or the start button, and you're gonna start typing voice meter. V pulls it up for me. So once you click that, it's going to load the app. And as you can see, it says engine starting. And right here, all you need to do is make sure that your hardware out is set to ASIO for all. Now, let me explain ASIO for all, um, or actually not really explain it, but I'll just kind of show you how my setup is. This way you can see what's going on. So once ASIO for all is set up, you're gonna have this little green icon in your in the bottom in the task bar down here. When you click that, it's gonna open up the settings window. Now in the settings window, you can see right here my interface, then the virtual in and outs through voice meter, and then the real tech uh, audio is just the built-in audio card uh, on my motherboard on my computer. And this is basically where you would turn them on and off by clicking these buttons. And if you click the wrench here, this is where you can get into more of the advanced settings like turning them on and off individually, as well as latency, compensation, blah, blah, blah. I don't touch any of this stuff. It's usually pretty good to go. So just wanted to show you guys that so you can see where we're at now. So once this is set up and running, you're gonna launch the MPC software. And once that loads, you're going to go into your preferences. So you're gonna click the file tab, go down edit, go down to preferences. And over here, you just wanna make sure your device is the voice meter virtual ASIO. And you're gonna click test and you should hear a test tone. 
Now, once that is done, you're gonna click OK. And if you don't hear a test tone, no worries. You're going to have to do one more thing. So go to your bottom right hand corner of the taskbar and right here where you see the um, little speaker icon, click that and make sure that is set to voice meter input. Now you are ready for sampling. So to begin sampling, we're gonna now go back to the hardware controller. We're gonna hold down shift and we're gonna press the sample edit button. That is going to open up our sample window. Now over here, we're gonna go over the LCD real quick. So right here you can see there's our time. Then down here we have inputs one and two. Now if you're using an interface or whatever, this is, you know, that would be one and two on your interface. Right now we're using voice meter, so voice meter is basically one and two. Stereo channel, we wanna keep the monitoring off because we're recording our outputs, it's gonna give us a nasty feedback if we turn it on. Uh, threshold is just a style of sampling. So for example, right now it's set up, so if you press record, it will start recording, but if you turn up the threshold, when the volume of whatever you're playing hits that threshold, it's going to start recording at that point. So I usually keep that off because I don't, I don't record like that. And then our sample time is 20 seconds. You can turn that up or down. I leave it there because generally my samples aren't very long. And then our output is the stereo out. Now down here, we have a few options that you don't see. We, it, right now we're on the sampler tab, but if we clip, click this, we have the looper tab. Now, to be honest, I'm not gonna lie you guys, I don't really use that, so I'm not too familiar with it. So I can't really advise you on that one. So you guys may want to bust out the manual for that. Sorry, I know I'm trying to you know, teach you guys this, but that's really something I don't really get down with. But now we're gonna go move over to pad hold. These are the different styles of sampling you could do. So this is basically, if you want to record one sample, you're gonna leave it on sample. If you want to sample in slices, you're gonna put it here. So the cool thing is, as soon as you hit record and the audio is playing, this pad will blink and after, you know, when you hear the part you want to start a sample from, you would just click that pad and then this one would light up and you would just keep moving over and then you would add slices. And so once it's done, once you're done, you would click stop and then it would ask you, hey, do you want to save this as a new program? You'd say yes and then you can go and load that program and you would have all your slices. The next thing is pad tap, which works very similar to the slices. I'm not sure exactly what the de you know, what the differences are, but it's very similar. And then you have pad hold, which is basically just that one. As long as you hold the pad, it's recording. When you stop, it stops recording on that pad. So now that everything's set up, all you gotta do is just pick your audio source. So for the sake of our stuff, I'm just gonna use this MP3 I got right here. And now you can see we have levels here. Um, peak is basically just that peak line right there. When you click it, it makes it go away so you can set up a new peak. And then effects right here basically allows you the ability to add effects before the, um, the sound is recorded. So you can add a delay or add hall to whatever you're recording. So I don't really do that because I like to add effects after I sample, but you know, again, to each their own. If that's what you like to do, you wanna experiment with that, hey, it's here for you. So now to sample, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna click record. And when we're done, we just click stop. Now, as you can see, we can just click slice and then we will keep adding different chops basically, but we're just gonna click stop. Now when it's done, we can, here, let me stop the audio real quick. That's playing. Okay, so right here we can either play it, we can discard it, we can keep it, we can edit it. And then we basically pick the program we want it to go to, assign it to the pad, and that's that. So now when we click main, there it is. So now mine sounds real choppy, I think it's because I got all this other stuff open, but that's basically, in a nutshell, how you would sample in the MPC Studio. Now there's one thing I actually forgot to mention, and that is when you close your MPC software, you're gonna want to also 
um, close voice meter, obviously. And when you do that, don't forget to go back to your little speaker icon and set that voice meter input back to whatever you had it set to before. So if you had it set to, you know, your um, your outputs on something else, you're gonna set it right back to where it was before. Because what happens is if you don't set it back and voice meter is closed, you no longer have a sound source that, you know, your audio is coming out of. So you need to tell it where you want your sound coming out of. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, guys, so at this moment, I wanna thank you guys for watching. And hey, if you've been following along on this uh, tutorial journey, I appreciate it. And don't forget to click the like button, drop a comment if you know these videos have helped you out. And don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be notified when I drop new videos. All right, y'all. Take care now. Peace.